Hello, welcome back to my channel, and if this is your first time with me, my name is Melissa Reed, and I am a mixed media collage artist from southwestern Pennsylvania. So in today's video, uh, much like in the last one, um, if you have been with me before for these last couple of videos, I mentioned that I am going to be entering a juried exhibit coming up here actually next month now. Um, the piece that I'm doing is going to be 30 inches by 40 inches, and so I've been doing some little test pieces to kind of just feel out some ideas before I do it on the larger panel. So that's what this piece is today. I am using here a 6 by 12 inch cradled wooden board that I went ahead and gessoed. Right now I am just going in with a little bit of Artist Loft Prussian Blue and Basically, I'm just getting down a layer of paint because I want the blue tones in the background. I'm going to be going over it with some different colors and also with some collage papers, but I really want these blues to pop from behind. I like to go in with some base colors when I'm doing a piece, even if most of them do end up getting covered up because you can pull some of those colors out and they really just kind of give a an interesting quality to the overall piece that you wouldn't be able to get any other way. So what I'm doing is just applying some of this Prussian blue to my board with one of my um, paint shapers. And I have links to all of the paints and all of the products that I'm using in the description here. So if there's a, if you're interested in taking a look and seeing where to purchase any of those, just check out the description. If I don't mention something, if I don't put a link for something that you would like a link to, just let me know because sometimes it's hard to remember each and every individual thing that I've put into these, but I do believe I've gotten most of it there. So now that I've got the Prussian blue on there, I'm going to go in with a little bit of Grumbacher Burnt Umber. Those two colors work really nicely together and actually if you miss, I'm sorry, if you mix that Persian blue with the Burnt Umber, you can get an interesting shade of black, which I know kind of sounds weird to say, but when artists mix their own black, you can get more depth and more personality into the color. So I'm just going in again with the Paint Shaper and I did not wait for the Prussian blue to dry because I do want a little bit of that mixing to occur right on the board there. But I left some of the, some white patches so that you would get the true color of the burnt umber in there too. So I'm just going in and basically getting a nice base layer down. And once I do that, I'm gonna let everything get dried up before we move on to the next step. Next up, on top of the Prussian Blue and the Burnt Umber, I am going in with a little bit of the Artist's Loft Teal. And again, this will be in the description as well. And I end up using some of the teal and some of the uh, turquoise, which are two really great colors by them. Um, you can see the turquoise laying on the table there next to the piece. The teal that I'm using now is a little bit of a lighter color and I wanted to just pull some of those lighter blues out because they're going to contrast nicely with the Prussian blue that I have down and the teal that I'm about to put down too is a little bit of a darker color but it's a highly saturated color. So the turquoise and the teal play nicely off of each other just to create some different shades again so that when I put the main colors on top, you're not going to just see one solid ocean of one type of blue. You're going to get a lot of different values and different tones and shades that you wouldn't get from just using one single color. Now that I have a pretty good base of the blues and the dark brown down, I'm going to go ahead and give everything a little bit of time to dry and then I'm going to go ahead and put some of the top colors that I want to use on this. And I'm planning on using a very rich red. Um, actually, it's going to be Winsor Newton Cadmium Red Hue. I typically would use the Grumbacher Red here because it is one of my absolute favorite reds, but sadly I went to grab it and realized that I really didn't have very much left. But the Cadmium Red is pretty close. Um, but as far as the Grumbacher Red goes, I did look on Amazon and I was able to order it. They had it super cheap. It was like less than $6 a tube. So I ended up ordering 
three tubes of it just to have on hand because they used to sell it at my local Michaels, but they don't have that brand there anymore. But that link will also be in the description if you are looking for a great red. And I am in no way sponsored by this company or anything, but it is just such a great color that I use it all the time. If you're looking for a rich kind of glossy red, I would recommend that one. So along with that red, I'm also using some Artist Loft Cadmium Orange which is a fairly opaque orange, but since I'm using the, my little um, gift card there to spread it around as well as the paint shapers, I'm able to get a nice variation in the thickness right there on the board without thinning it out ahead of time. And I really like the way it's mixing with the red. It's giving me some warm but yet bright tones, which is exactly what I was looking for in this piece. And you can see how I am not necessarily trying to cover every single millimeter of this board up because I do want some of those blues that we worked so hard to put down initially to be able to pop through. So what I'm doing here is intentionally leaving some places blank, but more importantly, I'm going back over top and removing paint once I have it down. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it will just add another layer of value. You can see there that I had scraped it through and it, it just really gives a great quality to the piece. Now comes the collage. So I just pulled a piece of sheet music out of a book and what my plan is here is I'm going to cut a large circle out of the piece. I'm not using the uh, positive part, I'm actually using the negative. And if you were here for my last video, I demonstrated the technique that I have been using for over a decade of using my wood burner and burning holes into paper to create collage papers. So that's what I'm going to do with this piece here. I'm going to cut the middle portion of that circle out, then I'm going to go in and burn the whole entire rest of the piece. I kind of have two ideas here and I'm not sure which which thing is going to work. I kind of have a feeling that the one idea that I'm going to try is not going to work and you will see here that I was absolutely right. It's a terrible idea and don't do it. I'll show you in a minute. But um, the what I was looking for is I want to use some gold leaf in this. Well, imitation gold leaf. But I was trying to think of a way to... Like what the best way would be to get the leaf on the burned papers. So initially I thought, do I want to burn them and then try to apply the leaf to the burned pieces or should I apply the leaf to the paper and then burn holes in it? And kind of <laughs> neither of those things is exactly going to give me the results that I want, but I, I kind of found a way around it. Um, but here I'm just showing you how I create these burned papers and I'm going to speed this up a little bit and cut out the middle so that you're not just sitting here watching me burn paper for three hours. But it creates these wonderful, delicate, lacy patterns and they have that great char around the edges. And when you use your matte medium to lay that down on the surface of your board and it just becomes part of the background but has those just wonderful qualities to it. There's no other way to get that and I just there's something about that that just really speaks to me. So at this point, I decided I'm going to adhere some of the gold leaf down to the circle and try to burn the holes through that to see what happens. My fear was, well, first of all, I'm not 100% sure what those 
leaf sheets are made out of because like I said, it's a synthetic gold leaf. So don't know 100% what's in the material, but I'm also using the Liquitex matte medium on there. And I had concerns as to what kind of toxic fumes that was going to put off in the burning process. And I found out very quickly, lots of them and they're terrible. Um, you'll see here in a second, I burn one hole into that thing and call it quits because something terrible is being <laughs> released into the air there. And I know I don't wanna be breathing it. So that is not a thing that I'm going to be doing. Um, I do like the idea of putting the metal leaf on the cutout pieces and then maybe adhering some of those as their own separate collage papers to give to give a little more structure and hardiness because as anybody that's worked with the the uh, metal foils can tell you I'm, those things are so delicate you can't even pick them up with your hands because they will immediately just fall apart very difficult to handle so it would be a good way to kind of just create a little bit of structure you could even adhere it to some like tissue paper or something very thin so that you're not adding a ton of bulk to it, but just a little bit of something that's going to allow you to handle it a little bit better. So while that circle is drying, I just went ahead and finished the rest of this sheet that I'm burning um, by putting all of the burn holes in it. And then I also went around the outer edges and the inner edges of the circle to create that charred look that I really like. I didn't end up experimenting with applying the leaf to the pre-burned sheet because I just think it's going to be a giant mess. So I think my way around that is probably going to be to just adhere the paper, the burn paper down and leaf over top of it. There is where I went in to test that out and immediately decided, nope, not gonna do that. Again, don't do that. I don't even care how much ventilation you have. The smell off of that was so terrible, it's not worth it. This, so there's bound, this is why we do experiments. You find out what works and what doesn't, but there's gonna be a better way. I just have to figure out what that is. All right, so now that I have that nice burn collage paper ready, I'm looking at placement on the board. And I'm not 100% sure where I wanna go with this because if you've watched my videos before, you know that I am an intuitive artist. So I don't go into these pieces with a lot of planning. Um, this one there was, I don't want to say planning, but I had some ideas I wanted to experiment with. So that was kind of the basis of this whole video. But I still didn't entirely know what the piece was going to look like and know exactly which creative decisions I was going to be making in the moment. So that's a really cool thing about collage because you can just try on a bunch of different things, move the papers around the board or the canvas and just see what works for you or whatever's gonna, you know, really kind of grab you in the moment. So in laying that paper down, I realized what I actually wanted was some of the foil underneath that piece of burn collage paper. So I'm just going in with some of my matte medium and I discussed this in my last video. Um, matte medium is not technically the best choice for adhering metallic foil. They, there is a foil adhesive because what's about to happen is what will happen. And as soon as you lay it down there and touch it at all to smooth it down, it starts lifting. But that's actually a quality that I look for in my work, especially in these pieces that I'm doing right now. So you can see right there, I just touched it with the color shaper and it, it just starts coming up. And when I hit it with the brush, same thing, it's just going to keep lifting. But it gives it a weathered kind of ragged, um, I can't think of the word I want to use, but you know what I mean. Just like a worn look to it, shabby. And that's what I'm going for with this piece because we've got the imperfection of all of the paint in the background. We've got the non-perfect edges of the burned piece. So I wouldn't want just like a square slab of foil laying down on the piece because it just wouldn't be, it wouldn't make a lot of visual sense.
I went ahead and let that dry for a few minutes and now I'm just taking a soft brush and just brushing off any obvious flakes that are sitting on top of the surface because I'm not sure if I'm going to do more paint on top of it or just stick with collage, but I don't want the surface to be, you know, gunked up and chunky necessarily. So we got all of that off of there. Oh, incidentally, if you can, if there's a noise in the background, I have my space heater running and I would turn it off, but it is just so darn cold in here that I'm going to just kind of go with it today. So if that's what, you, if you hear something, that's what it is. All right. So now that I've got the foil down there and I've found the placement of where I want this burned collage piece to go, I'm taking some of my matte gel medium and just laying it down. I put down a nice layer over the whole area that I'm going to glue down and then I go back over with more on top to make sure that it is you know really stuck there and kind of just becomes a, a part of the whole piece um, this stuff dries perfectly clear you could also use gloss gel medium I say this in all of my videos I'm not a big glossy fan or at least I want to have that option at the end so I like to use the matte and then if I want a glossy finish I can use a spray at the end which is what I end up doing So with these collage pieces, the burned papers that I make, they're obviously very delicate. Um, so when you are spreading, you know, when I'm using my card there to spread out the medium and get off any excess, it, it, you have to really be kind of careful. You can very easily tear it, which isn't a huge problem um, because when you do that, you can A, just, you know, put the piece back that you tore off. Or again, I'm not going for perfection here, so sometimes that's okay, but... I didn't really have any major issues with that because I was just very careful in how I went over it with the card. And now I'm just wiping off any excess of the, the matte gel so that um, even though it does dry clear, I don't want an excess of buildup, especially around the edges of the, the negative space there. So I just wiped off what I didn't want. So once that all dried, I decided it needed a little bit of a darker color and maybe some more circles. So I mixed up a little bit of Grumbacher Payne's Gray with a good amount of the matte medium, which thinned it out just enough. And actually, now that I'm watching this, it's a little hard to see on the video. I'm hoping it'll translate to, to the TV a little better, but you can kind of see just the vague faint outline of those circles that I'm stamping down there with my aluminum foil tube. And that's exactly what I wanted. The Payne's Gray is already somewhat opaque, I'm sorry, somewhat transparent, but when you mix it with the matte medium, you can push that transparency to a very high degree. And that's what I did here because I just wanted just a suggestion of circles. So I sat with it for a while looking like that and I thought it might be finished, but I kept going back to it and thinking that, no, it's not quite finished. And I wasn't sure what I needed to do, but I knew it needed to have a little bit more of the collage on it. So after trying out a bunch of different shapes and a bunch of different placements, I finally settled on three elements at the bottom and one at the top. And I'm going to show you right now. Incidentally, I'm cutting off of some pieces that I already had burned for another project that I ended up not using. So it's nice to have those on hand so that I'm not having to necessarily custom burn right there in the moment because it does take a little while. So I've settled on the placement for these pieces and I'm just going to go ahead and use some of my matte medium to get those glued down and I needed something up in the top left and I decided on that one large circle of burned paper that I had and I just did a little trim work on it to kind of make it fit a little bit better and I think that really pulls the whole entire piece together with a, just a nice continuity going through the whole thing. There's not too much empty space, there's not too much going on. I had thought about adding more paint on top of it, but it looked finished to me and it didn't really look like it necessarily needed any more. So once I have these guys all glued down, that's it. I'm calling it a piece.
Stay tuned here for the finished product that I'm going to show you. And I'm also going to show a few more progress pics of the large scale piece that I'm working on. I, um, I said in my last two videos, I'm instead of just trying to make a separate video out of creating that giant monster, I'm going to just show progress pics because I'm really, I'm just recording on my iPhone. So there's not a good way to do that on a piece that large that you're going to actually be able to see. So I'll just include some pictures at the end. But here is the finished piece that I made today. I am so happy with the way it turned out. I just absolutely love the feel to it. It just has this earthy kind of celestial quality to it, which is absolutely what I was going for. And I think the colors are great. So if you've ever wondered if something could be both earthy and celestial, now you know. But thank you guys for sticking around and um, thank you to everybody that has subscribed. If you haven't had a chance to do that, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button for me. It really helps out my channel and give me a thumbs up on the way out. I'm gonna go ahead and post a few of those progress pics like I promised you from my large scale piece here in just a moment. But I hope you all have a great week and I will talk to you again next week.